Time to get this brand new Avalon Mini 3 unboxed and up and running. This is a full room heater slash Bitcoin miner. And at full bore, it's gonna give me about 37 and a half terahash pulling 800 watts. Then opening it up, looks like we've got our instruction manual right here, as well as a Wi-Fi module. So if we peel this back, we've got the little uh, USB dongle here like this to get it connected to Wi-Fi. Looks like we've also got some more uh, documentation inside, which includes this little card here that gives us information about connecting to F2 pool, but I'm personally gonna be doing some solo mining here instead. Next, let's start removing the styrofoam and inside we've got ourselves the miner. It's definitely well packed in here with a bunch of styrofoam and underneath the miner here, we've got our power cable. Then we can unwrap the miner and plug in both the power cable and the Wi-Fi dongle. Now, taking a look at the design of the miner, we've got our heat outflow from right here in the front. We've got a uh, power button right there on the left side, as well as a display here, which we're gonna get to play with here in a minute. Then if we go ahead and lay it down here for a moment, uh, underneath we've got the filter, which actually comes off really easily here, better than on the uh, Nano series. Really easy to just pop on and off here like this. It looks like it's just got some magnets, so it's really easy to clip in place. Then uh, if we take a look over here, uh, we've got our power connector right there, as well as an on off switch. And there's a nice little cover here like this uh, to protect that button so it doesn't get switched off automatically. Uh, and we've got the USB port here to plug in our Wi-Fi. And speaking of which, let's go ahead and do that here next. Then we'll go ahead and uh, flip it here to on. We'll uh, close this cover down here to protect that button. Then we can slide in our power cable here like this. And it's kind of cool, this cover doesn't pop up anymore, so it actually keeps that uh, button protected. Then let's go ahead and plug in our miner here into the power meter so we can see how much power it draws. And as it's booting up here for the first time, looks like it says, hi. So, hey miner. <laughs> Next, it's prompting me to go ahead and connect here via Bluetooth. And to do that, let's go ahead and open up the Avalon app. Uh, we're gonna wanna go and do new devices and then just say search. And it should go ahead and find the miner for us. There we go, it found the Mini 3, so we'll tap on that. Then hit connect. And now it'll ask me for my Wi-Fi info. Then I'll select which hotspot I want. Then we'll punch in our password and hit save. Make sure it's on the same network, okay. And it looks like now we're gonna go ahead and uh, get up and running here. We can go into the miner here like this. Oh, looks like it wants to go ahead and uh, give us a new password. So we'll hit okay. Initial password is gonna be admin, and then we'll type in a new password for it. Then we'll hit save, automatically restart after saving, okay. Now, as it's booting up here, it's gonna go ahead and say hi again, and then it's gonna start giving us some stats here about the miner. So it's gonna first uh, sync up the time here in just a moment. It's also gonna give us the IP address of the miner as well, which is really nice so that you can connect to it directly in a browser uh, and make any changes if needed if you're not gonna be using the app. It's also gonna give you the hash rate once it starts hashing here too. And it's gonna tell you the uh, heating mode that it's in. So right now, for example, it's in the super heating mode. So definitely going at uh, full power. Right now it's zero watts as it's getting uh, started up. Then as it keeps going, you can see now it went ahead and synced the time. Uh, that time is incorrect. It looks like I'm gonna have to set the uh, time zone here in just a moment. Now diving into the app here, let's get familiar with all the different features and options. We'll start up here with the uh, room that it's in. I've got it here in my office, so I'll just set it to that. You can see uh, up on the top right corner, it can tell me the Wi-Fi hotspot it's connected to, as well as my current hash rate, which right now is about 41 terahash. And then the miner can operate in three different modes. We'll start here first with the heater mode. This is basically designed to let you set a certain temperature that you can slide to. Uh, and it's designed to keep the miner operating around that temperature or so. When it's cooler, it'll go ahead and hash and heat up the room. But then when the average temperature gets up to this point, it'll actually go ahead and shut off for a little while to try and maintain that temperature. Then down underneath, we have the eco and super options. If we set it to eco, it's designed to run at around 500 watts or so. But then if we set it over here to super, it's gonna go ahead and run at full hash power, pulling 800 watts. Then down underneath there, you can see we've got the timer option. So if you want, you can choose the times when it's gonna operate or not. Additionally, next to it, we've got the option here for the display. So if we pull it up, you can see on the display of the miner, it's gonna tell us things like the time, the IP address and the current hash rate. We can also, if we want, just ignore the scrolling thing and just switch to the time itself so that stays static here on the display. Or if we go over here to custom, we can actually go and upload our own image that we want. Uh, I actually uh, preloaded this Bitcoin image here <laughs> uh, to display on the miner, but you can of course upload anything that you want. It is gonna be pretty low resolution, but you do have the ability to do it. 
You also have the on off button here where if I tap that, you can see I can just uh, turn off the display altogether. But for now, I think I'll go ahead and uh, turn it on and just have something here on the screen. Uh, now let's go back here and if you take a look, you'll notice that uh, we've actually hit the target temperature and right now uh, it's saying that it's in standby. So it's not actually gonna be doing any heating. And you'll also notice on the top right, the hash rate has dropped to zero terahash per second. Then as it uh, cools off, eventually it's gonna kick back on and resume heating for you. Uh, now, if we go down here next to settings, we've got a bunch of different options here. We can go in and adjust the password like we did before. Uh, we can also go in and adjust our pool configuration, which I'll get to here uh, in just a minute. Uh, the filter is also eventually gonna get dirty, and so you have the option here to actually clear it in the app. You've got some warranty information. You can sync the time of the miner with your phone. And then scrolling down, there's some information here on how to get support with your miner or the alarm record option is basically gonna allow you to access the logs on the miner. Now in mining mode, the Mini 3 is designed to run at full speed, full power, full hash rate, 24 seven. It's not really so much prioritizing the ambient temperature, it's basically just gonna be going full speed the whole time. You'll also notice that there's no longer an option here for eco mode or super mode or anything. Instead, it's gonna be targeting that 40-ish terahash per second hash rate. And to keep the temperatures around 75 degrees Celsius or so, it will actually be kicking on the fans sometimes. And so the fans could actually be running louder in mining mode than they will in heating mode. Again, we're prioritizing the mining here, not the heating or the volume levels. Now, if that is a concern, you can actually go to the other direction. We're gonna switch over here to night mode. You'll notice that when it switches to night, the uh, display is gonna turn off. Also, it's gonna be prioritizing volume and really uh, cranking down the fans as needed. And in this mode, you can see we can uh, go in here and adjust the temperatures like we can in the heater mode. But again, uh, it's gonna be running a little bit quieter here and uh, we can turn that uh, display off. Now, if we want the display on, we can actually tap the light button uh, here in the app and it'll turn it on here for three minutes. And so I guess it can function here kind of like a nightlight <laughs> if you like. And then you can always just uh, tap it again to turn that light off. Now your hash rate and power draw are gonna drop in this mode too. And of course this is variable and you'll find times when the power actually drops off altogether when it stops heating. Next, let's head over to the computer so we can start entering our pool information. And to do that, we're just gonna go to a browser and we're gonna type in the IP address that pops up in the miner. Uh, and then we're gonna get this error here that it doesn't support HTTPS, which is totally fine. So we're just gonna hit uh, continue to site. Now this QR code is gonna pop up on screen. And so we're gonna pull up our app. We'll go up here to the top right and then we're gonna hit scan. And then we're just gonna scan the QR code. It'll let us log in and then drop us right here to the main page from the browser. Now, if we take a look here, you're gonna notice there's a lot of information, things like your hash rate, uh, how much power you're drawing, etc. But you'll notice we're not really hashing yet because there's not actually a pool that's connected here yet. So we're gonna go over to pool config and we're gonna to wanna to type in our pool. Now for the mining pools, it's gonna give us the option for three different pools. And so for the first one, I'm gonna show you what I use here for my local miner here at home uh, connected to a start nine. So I'm gonna get the stratum information that's provided here from my miner. And then for the worker name, I wanna enter in my Bitcoin wallet address, which is gonna be the address where I received the Bitcoin in case I hit the block. So I'll copy and paste that in here. And then I can also do dot mini three. I'm giving it like a unique worker name so that when I'm looking at it in my pool info, I can uniquely identify the work being done by each individual miner. And then for password, I'm just gonna type in whatever. It doesn't actually really matter. And then for pool number two, I'm gonna go ahead and use public pool. It's also a solo miner slash lottery miner pool. And I'm gonna use all the same info here like before and just paste it in. And this is gonna be a nice fallback in case something happens here to my local server, it'll then fall back to public pool. Now for the third option, we are gonna to need to enter something here. If I try to hit submit here with only two uh, pool options, it'll error out and say the pool configuration options cannot be empty. So we'll hit okay. And then as a demo, I'll also use brains here. And brains is nice because they actually allow you to earn some sats every day, which you just connect to a lightning wallet and then you can actually earn, uh, well, some sats every day. And so I go ahead and punch in their stratum information here. And then for the worker name, I'm gonna do my username dot the uh, name of the device that's mining here. And then for the password, again, doesn't matter. Once that's complete, we'll hit submit. After updating the mining pool, the device needs to be restarted manually. Okay, so we'll go ahead and go back to the dashboard here. And then we'll scroll down here to the bottom and hit reboot. Are you sure you wanna restart? And we'll hit okay. Now it'll go ahead and start booting back up again. 
And I'm also gonna turn the uh, display on here so as the miner starts booting up and getting up to speed, we can check in and see how it's doing. Now checking back in here with the miner again, it's been going for about an hour and a half or so. I've got it in mining mode, so it's been mining continuously. Looks like it's uh, working just fine. It's pulling 800 watts here as advertised. And my average hash rate here for the past hour and a half is about 40 and a half terahash per second, which is pretty fantastic. And volume wise, it's really not that bad, even at full speed hash power here. I'll let you listen to it, but uh, it's basically just kind of this background whir. And in terms of heat generation, it's doing a good job here too. I can definitely feel the warmth uh, from the heat that's being radiated here out of the front of the miner. We can also take a look at what it looks like here under the thermal cam. You can see the heat pattern here radiating out of the front of the miner. And you can also see the hottest portion that's marked there with like the red crosshair. That temperature is just over uh, 50 degrees Celsius or so, about 51. Uh, and if we take a closer look here, just kind of looking down, you can see uh, what the heat pattern looks like with the miner. And so far for me, this seems to be a pretty decent miner. I get some solid hash rate without a ton of noise, and I can run it here in my office alongside my Nano 3 and my Nano 3S to help keep my office nice and toasty, especially as we get into the winter time. And if you'd like to order one too, I'll put a link in the video description to where you can order a Mini 3 as well. And with that said, thanks so much for watching. Feel free to check out some of my other videos, taking a look at a bunch of other miners as well, if you're into this sort of thing. And if you are, make sure you subscribe and hit the notification bell so you can get Get notified as more videos like this go live. Thanks so much for watching. I hope you're doing great and I'll see you in the next one.